Majama Jams is brought to you by these greasy hands. We're back, we're back. We're in the bathroom in my new home. And you might remember that we, me and Mateo, in order to find some in, in, inspiration, we took some cough syrup. We just, just took some cough syrup bottles, but it's kind of in the weird, it's a weird part of the trip, Mateo. Oh, Mateo. Oh, God. His pulse. Whew. His pulse. I'll just use his hand. We're gonna do the improv section. This is a this is a hardened drug kingpin. And, 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 and. This is a hardened drug kingpin. This is Godzilla. Godzilla. Now don't visualize this with your eyes. Just seeing a plastic toy in a bottle of order converter. See it through ours. We open our scene of Godzilla bursting in and see. He's given a life, but then he's appreciated by everyone except the folks who gave him that life. It's just not right. Uh, let me rephrase the question. How's the arm? Welcome back, everyone, to Majama Jams, a show where we discuss other people's work to avoid doing our own. Now, in the interest of keeping with our full disclosure, as is legally required by the YouTube Ethics Agreement, I just wanted to inform you guys that today we had a little something special in mind that we procured in the wild. Message in a cell phone. A thriller starring Nick Whitaker, James Lobb, and the incomparable Robbie Merrill. But someone's VCR, who shall remain nameless only fast forwards videotapes and doesn't play them. God forbid we ever enjoy anything in this life. I mean, honestly, that's probably the best way to watch message in <laughs> itself. Possible. It's on full fast forward. So Matteo Silvestre Molinari said to us, hey guys, I've actually got a contingency plan. It's not suicide, but it might as well be close. Matteo, what did you pull out of your god awful magician's hat today? North, Miss Tessmacher. North, 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 North. North. Now, guys. It's a quote from Superman 2. Now, guys. Oh. Wait, before you. Putting it always. What away. happened to your shirt, man? Yeah. The crocodile land? We used to share that shirt. You used to what? Share that shirt. Share that shirt? It's not all we used to share. Not in a gateway. Sometimes when you were constipated, I shove my shit into your butt. Mom's gonna watch that line and go, oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I don't have to bleep it. Now pull it back out. The F word is the only word that needs to be bleeped, according to YouTube. I mean, besides like. Yes, well. It, racial slurs and child hmm. sexual acts. I, I think, yeah, probably sexual acts in general or, or something. Some very extremely derogatory terms, yes. Speaking of offensive acts committed by a child. Segway. North is a 1994 comedy movie directed by Mr. Rob Reiner, who is probably best known for viciously shoving a meatball parm down his throat in the corner of a uh, canter's booth, uh, juices dribbling down his chin, and a bunch of tomato sauce stains on his white and button-down flannel as he fires off a Twitter rant about what's wrong politically with the world. That's it. Oh. So that's what Mr. Reiner is known best for, but here he's actually directing a movie. But he directed more than one. Yeah, but this is the only one that he'll be remembered for because, oh my God. Oh, man. Yes. Now, 
Matteo is a fan of Roger Ebert, America's famous and beloved, uh, now deceased, movie critic. Literally a week ago, you said that you started to like him. I, I, well, I, what did I say that it, it said disdain? I was gonna. I, I was. You singled me out. It's well, true. You did that. What did I say? You do that a lot. You grab me or Mateo and say, "Hey, this person right here." Oh, that's just because it's fun names, to say your guys' names. And then you point out things about us that we wouldn't normally tell the public. I do have a full name shtick. So it's just part. But what I was gonna say is that he'll he'll interject sometimes when we're about to watch stuff. Mateo will say, "Here's what Roger Ebert said." You're doing it right I now. I would never say that, but yes, you did today. And but but not not like that. It was a Roger Ebert. Well, look, he is a god among men. The, he, he was. The point mm. is, the point is, and I have softened Ebert. It was more the concept of criticism in general when I was younger. I go soft every time I look at him. <laughs> Better punchline somewhere in there if I was quicker. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I say that to say, Mr. Ebert apparently hated, 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 hated. Hated, 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 hated this movie. I was rolling along, writing my usual scathing, but civilized comments, when suddenly a sinister inner force took over, and I found myself typing, and I quote, I hated this movie. Hated, 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 hated this movie. Hated it. Hated every simpering, stupid, vacant, audience-insulting moment of it, unquote, and so on. Altogether, I used the word hated ten times. When uh, when it was reviewed, Roger Ebert said mm -hmm. about North, I hated, 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 <laughs> hated this movie. Seven hated. <laughs> Seven hated. And uh, I get it. Because as we started, I was like, okay, it's a curious tone. And don't worry, we're going to start out the discussion on tone. That is the most interesting thing about movies. But as we got towards the end... Oh. This is even worse than watching the movie. As we got towards the end, there was an unparalleled effect of misery, which started gestating... Directed by Rob Reiner. This isn't what happened last week. Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us. This isn't fair. He didn't get out of the cock a duty car. Directed by Rob oh. Reiner. Rob Reiner? Rob... <laughs> Rob Reiner? Rob Reiner? Rob Reiner? <laughs> Reiner dr directed Misery. Yes. That's and now here he gave us Misery. Hmm. Rob Reiner directed Misery the movie, and he also directed Misery on his honeymoon as his wife was forced to lay there while his fat, sweaty, hair-covered gut smashed into her over and over again as his inch-long penis barely... The point is that by the time this movie was over, I was... Viciously irritated by it in a way that felt uncharacteristic. Wait, doesn't Rob Reiner do comedies? Very yeah. angry. Uh, when Harry met Sally. Yes. Princess Bride. Yes. And He's... Matteo, for the second time, after Yeti, he said, don't worry, there's only ten minutes left. That was a lie. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Here it got even worse. He said, don't worry, there's no more than ten minutes. And he was so sure of himself. <laughs> He said, let me pause it just to show you there's not much you left. You pressured we had him into pausing it. Though. five minutes at that point. I swear I was convinced that they were, they were just like, I completely forgot uh, the whole plot uh, of him trying to, I mean, the, the, the killer who tries to kill him. And I thought that after that scene, he was just like hopping on the plane. I really, I really actively dislike this movie, so it's good. We're going to get into it. You know that's no day at the beach. So... Let's do the plot quick, because there's so much. This is one of those ones where there is so much. I think it's going to be great jams. I don't want to get into it. You say it every time. It's true, every time. I don't like the plot synopsis, but it's, no. it's, we have to do it. Uh, this is very quick. So, I'll, I can do it in a second. Take on, Captain. North is a kid uh, who feels unappreciated by his parents. So thanks to a shrewd, uh, questionable lawyer. Okay. He gets, uh, let's say, awarded the chance of finding new parents, but uh, he has uh, two months in order to find them. And otherwise, he would be put in an orphanage. He then travels all across the world looking for parents uh, who are rich or extravagant or bizarre, all because apparently he is this uh, wonderful kid that uh, every other parent's uh, <coughs> say oh I would love to have you as a kid 
but eventually he realizes not only that his parents are the only one that he actually wanted, but the whole movie it was just a dream. And he was loved all along. Yeah, that's kind of doubly... I mean, I guess the dream ending at one point did work, but it's usually brought up with disdain as a lazy device. I had even kind of half forgotten that that was our ending. That's how much I've been in a jumbled mood because of this. Very impressive. Now, one of the things I want to kick right off with that you said is that we're, we were supposed to have established that North is this beloved superstar, amazing yeah, kid there, that there, any parent would there want. There is an editing uh, where a montage. You should hear what all the other parents say about me. North's room is always clean. North always looks both ways. North never spoils his appetite. North flosses. And right off the bat, addiction, I can't quit. Right off the bat, I don't think we get that translated property now to be fair there is an attempt to show it but this brain made me this brain this movie made my brain that thing up here i believe what's left uh, of it it made me think of home alone because in our intro of home alone we're very effectively presented with who kevin McAllister is in a way that sets us up for what the movie's going to be that little intro before we get into our main thing does a great job of showing what a little wily smart mouth still hypersensitive unsure of his place uh, both helpless and both ingen ingenu ingenuity. Uh, ingenue. So, all right, let's vote. <laughs> I'm going to go with... <laughs> so, uh, so, I'm not uh, enjoying this. Can we watch another film? <laughs> Listen, in all honesty, as much as I hated this movie, I mean, it's fine. It's not that bad. I, uh, totally, it's, it's horrible. Uh, but in all honesty, I, I mean, it's fine. So let's <laughs> vote with... I'll start. Yeah, fine. We now return to... Majama. Look at that boy. Well, hey, howdy, North. It drags a little bit. No, listen. I mean, in terms of being bored and wanting to tear my skin off halfway through, I think that just was no, did you, circumstances of being alive. On a scale of one to ten. No, he's right, because like I said, there was a very interesting transition. In the beginning, I was like, ha, 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 Golly gee, I could see why Mateo picked this to break down. There is kind of a weird jarring tone, but you know, I even said, it's not the most unpleasant experience. And then... With that tone, is with, it? I said it in that exact tone. I tried oh, yeah. to mimic it for authenticity. Ho, ho, ho. And then, I don't know if it was after the horrible reveal that was no, 20 no, no, it was, was, before, it was before, then, before then, I started to actively get irked by it. Sorry. I think Matthew just tapped out and was like, whatever. But I started I watched to, it. to actively... Get irked by it. I'll tell you whatever you want. In a way, and again, this reminds me of what I said about the protagonist of High Point, where sometimes well, these don't bring these, High Point into this. These man. Mateo pet peeves. We're already I feel like I'm hitting rock bottom them for the first time. I was like, I don't. Why am I forced to sit through? I don't care where this is going. I've heard rumors to that effect. And you know, it goes without saying. It's an obvious thing that you have to care about the the outcome to be with the movie. But once we get to the assassin, I'm like, I don't care about any of this. So it means nothing that he's being hunted down. And the biggest sin, which again I feel like is a you point, is that they do nothing at all. They I'll give they, you do a little bit of work to show that North is this beloved superstar kid. You do a little bit of work. Yeah. But I in my is opinion, that before he's dreaming though? Yeah. Oh, that's another good point. Let me, in my opinion, you do zero work to make me feel the tiniest bit of emotion at our conclusion where the parents say we love you. Yeah. We love you so much, North. If anything ever happened to you, I, I don't know what we do. And again, going to Home Alone again, because I feel like Home Alone kind of becomes, you know, a little, you laugh it off, it's, oh, it's ridiculous with the traps, but then you start to break it down. There's a lot of laughing. really good building blocks. 
how beautifully does it work when Kevin sees his mom in the corner at the end. He even stops for a second. He's not sure he can take it in. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. They hug. Kate, um, oh my God. Blanchett. Oh God. Hudson. Catherine O'Hara. I felt so horrible for not, because I was about to say she's, she elevates everything, her, her face, her motherly worry. That moment works. It even works in the sequel and we get the same thing again. He's at the, at the Christmas tree. I got nothing here. No. There was nothing, nothing done to justify the fact. The parents the fact don't go on their own journey to discover yes. why they were ignoring their son or not fully taking him. Yeah, into... because the, the, his parents are comatose for virtually the whole movie. Well, but, but, but uh, even more so than that, my point would be that the we only see the parents during that one um, table. Um, Table on the all our, our, little our little interest. Yeah, yeah, they're two jobs and just complaining. Pants, that's what I know. I know pants. All oh, kinds of pants. I hit a day. Let me tell you something. So then he says to me, oh, yeah? What about His chinos? Stuff was for yeah. those Hebrew slaves in ancient <laughs> Egypt. Yes. Chinos, yeah, I know chinos. Those slaves huh? were in Disneyland compared to working in a travel Then ask me about yeah. jeans. Please, I grew up on jeans. And then everything else we see of the parents is all a dream. Therefore, we have no character development whatsoever, aside from that one right. scene at the dinner table where they're arguing, so they don't learn anything, they don't grow, yeah. they don't realize the error of the ways, they're taking their son for granted, they're not having the family time. So it's pretty much his North's journey, which is okay, because he has learned something from his dream. <gasps> but you get, like you said, you get nothing to attach. The parents aren't, and it's funny because we get them literally frozen, and they, they're not really characters other than the decent character work put in in the zany first couple scenes. Right. I and what is worse is that you have Jason Alexander and Julia the Louis who are, yeah, they're fantastic. You're bald! <laughs> no, I'm not. I was bald. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> And you give them virtually nothing to... Actually, the whole thing that they, they do, they appear more despicable than anything else. Mm -hmm. they, they, they give you... Mm -hmm. None of the characters is really heartwarming and maybe John Ritter at a certain point. He bond. comes closest, but that just might be retroactive John Ritter fondness. is a homosexual or are you just playing one on TV? No, the joke was that Mr. Furley had to think he was so he didn't know that he was getting crazy with Chrissy and... Mr. Furley. Becky. He had to pretend to be a homosexual in order to live. Oh, it was Mr. Uh, Roper. Yes, Mr. Roper. Furley's the second one. Yes, Mr. Roper. Because Three's Company is a British sitcom, which was remade here mm, in America. I'm pretty sure it's American. <laughs> yes. And I remember that I saw, I saw it when it came out in Europe, and uh, the f at least... The, the first episode, and I don't know which episode it was, but there was an episode with um, a mouse in the apartment. Who is gay. They actually, they've lifted the scripts from uh, England and they dropped it here. It's exactly bit by bit, word for word. Sorry to barge in on you again like this, but me and the wife are having a little disagreement about a certain matter of uh, <coughs> sex. You want to borrow a book? <laughs> I'm sorry to barge in again like this, ladies, but the wife and I are having a little disagreement over a certain matter of sex. Oh, you want to borrow a book? <laughs> no, it's about him. Him? No, he's not the one. No, no. No, no definitely not. Uh, we hear about that young man, George. <laughs> there he is. Him? Oh, no, 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 he's not the one I, uh, I, uh... No, definitely not. Hi. Tripper, Jack Tripper. I'm moving no, in here. No, the one I saw was completely... Oh, no, you're not. I'm not. How'd you do? I'm I'm Robin Tripp, and I should be moving in here. Yeah, no, the one I saw, I'd completely... Dip... You'll be doing no such thing. No? Are you crazy moving in with two girls? Not wait, my wait, building, Wait a minute, you know? it'll be strictly platonic. Well, I don't care what it is. What does that mean? <laughs> like you and me, Stanley. <laughs> what, a fella moving in with two birds? I suppose you thought I wouldn't realise dressed up like that. Oh, look, it would be purely platonic. I don't care what he... What's that mean? <laughs> like you and me, George. <laughs> I was surprised they wouldn't do that from the start for every episode. Every episode. They tried to do it also with The Office. For the first season, right? This yeah. Almost like no, 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 the first episode. The rest are originals. So but the first episode is literally the first episode of the oh. thing. But Now, the, uh, tone. Stop trying to take us back to... 
Tone is a magic trick. He he's our compass. He always aims to north. Damn, Mateo, that's flawless. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you know, you. we make a lot of simple off-handed jokes, but sometimes it's a bit elevated. That was really good. Everyone? So, take a moment. Everyone? Yeah. yeah. Guys? Moment, moment of silence. Paulo, Mom? Sparkio, if you're here this week. For your week. consideration. I highly doubt it. And continue. So, I recently saw Barbie for the second time. Because? As I was watching it. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't like it because I'm so into pounding vagina and not being down with womanly things. I had to see the movie again to make sure I hated it properly. And I did. It wasn't good. I went home and I watched some porn with boobs and viciously masturbated. It's embarrassing being your brother. To wit. So I recently saw Barbie for the second time and I was thinking to myself as I watched it, this movie should not work. It really shouldn't. What do you say in your head? Odd and jarring and it jumps from different things and it's very whimsical, but it works on all cylinders like gangbusters. So it's like this indescribable, intangible thing, but tone either, it's like the, the glasses in They Live. You see an entirely different set of things. So like with when the tone works, it's like a magician who can get away with everything. You're like, why does this flow this your brain will even be like it shouldn't flow but it does and i'm enjoying myself and quirkiness becomes brilliant genius choices and, and indicators of original creativity and then in this one when it's wrong it's almost like everything is just viewed through a cracked lens so all of it looks off no comment we now return to Majama. aloha nor welcome to our island paradise north Aloha. We got a big day planned for you. Wacky Wacky will take you up to the house so you can change. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. I thought that meant hello. Oh, in Hawaii, aloha means hello and goodbye. Doesn't that get confusing? Only when you're firing someone. Oh, well, aloha. What's so fascinating about North is I can see exactly like, I always come back to Chud. We all watch Chud, and we we're just kind of like, why does this have a cold audience? I always come back to that. We we're just like, why? I don't get what sent it out. This is it. We have to go right through here. Oh, you and your damn gun. Come on. That's it, Murphy. You're on your own as far as I'm concerned. I told you, I didn't want any more of this bullshit. I mean, I have to beat down. <laughs> This, why'd you make it? Why'd you think it was gonna be good? Why, I get it, I get it. I get why you thought the story was good. I get why you thought you could pull it off. I get why you thought it would be a great box office sweep, fun for the family. I understand all of it. It's- Insane amount of talent. Insane amount of talent. Incredible, an incredible cast. In fact, I, I wanted to point out that it is not, I, what is it, Mateo? Seven was the final count? And we're putting together two yeah. half laughs, two like, yeah. <laughs> two, <laughs> that type of. So I laughed seven times and I should say genuinely, and there are scenes I would like to highlight. For instance, before the parents go comatose, we get a glimpse of Jason Alexander's work life. And there are different rooms for every tester number who are yes. trying out pants. Because he is testing, he's a, a pants uh, trouser he's a pants, tester. A trouser. Pants tester. And no, every. Trouser, trouser tester. Trouser tester. Sounds every room dangerous. is a different fake diorama. Yes. Number six! <laughs> Phone call for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, from Susan. Get a number, would you? It's your son. Oh, uh, all right, just a minute. Is that piping holding up? Very well, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> now he's an expert at piping. Hello. Now this scenario almost again reminds me of my beloved kids in the hall. They were great at doing parodies of the workplace uh, in Nanny D. Don't uh, and the different, the different moronic things we have to do for work. And I thought, I see the comic zaniness, I see the, the, even the anarchy, one might say. I understand how you thought this would be what you wanted it to be, and yet everything comes across as confusing. And every choice is like, I see what was supposed to be happening, but what are we doing here? Why is this... It's, it's mean-spirited. Not intentionally, probably. Dumb and Dumber 2. 
which again, yes. we're going to get into, but yes. Dumb and Dumber 2, one of the most jarring things three. is our lovable idiots. Three. What? Three. Yes, technically three. We're going to do a breakdown of the trilogies. I'm very excited about it. The, the, the second one with Jim Carrey and uh, Jeff Daniels. Yeah, but you should call it three. No, you shouldn't, because the second one's a prequel. Because the, the title yeah, is... Yeah, but it's... The, the, the actual title is Dumb and Dumber 2. <sighs> this is not something we need to get sidetracked on. That's very convenient. Hey guys! You forgot your bike! Oh, it's not ours. Somebody abandoned it in front of our place. Yeah, just left it there, double chained to a tree. The guys come across as mean spirited yeah. in a way that's unpleasant. And the reason I chomped at the bit when you said maybe we could break down all three films is because I think it's going to be fascinating. I have yet to watch them back to back. And I really think it's going to be interesting to see the, the tone of meanness. It's fascinating because, again, the same thing I was saying, all of a sudden you twist that tone and why did the lovable guys we met 15, 20 years ago, however long it was, why do they suddenly seem mean? Why yeah. do they seem like a, a stab in a bad way? Why am I not laughing with what they're doing? So, yes, because, I, I agree. It, it's, it's a weird, ugly tone here. Yeah, right. It starts uh, with the parents arguing, and there is nothing funny there. Played with verve, I should say. Just, just because, yes. like I said, I see, you get Alexander as the, the befuddled dad. Ah, you don't know me about pants. But it's, the, but it's not, done... Not funny, but with, yeah. at least there's verve. To, they're not I mean, sleepwalking. It, it, it would have been easy, and of course, uh, clearly, it was a conscious choice, I would imagine, to say, don't do... The Seinfeld characters. I'm sorry, this was it was already kicked off. Oh no, wait. Ninety four. It it was in the middle of it. They started yeah. early. Okay, so it's almost done. So, I was actually yes. thrown off because I I literally said to myself, oh, this was pre Seinfeld. No, this the, no, the this middle is, of Seinfeld. Yeah. So, had they gone with the Seinfeld tone, the exact same uh, discussion would have been funnier. Instead, mm -hmm. here they are genuinely angry, with no. Um, and also, it's uh, and again, I feel like I'm usually not sensitive to these things, and yet. <laughs> and yet, just sums up your position on this show, unless we're doing scraps. <laughs> I'm listening. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet. I've been looking forward to this. The son screaming for help yes. to the deaf ears. I was immediately like, this isn't funny. No. This isn't setting up something. Like, he's screaming because he's like asphyxiating or something, and the parents are ignoring him. And again, I feel like I'm usually not the one sensitive to this stuff, and I'm like, this isn't, this is unpleasant. It's not, what is this? This feels, your son is screaming, and you're just talking over him, and this whole scene is, what are we doing here? Why are we here? This is the intro of our movie? We're stuck with Richard Harris for 90 minutes? I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. Everything from that point on is not uh, good. <laughs> yes, it's not good. It it's the the thing that is irritating about movies like this is that this one cost uh, apparently between forty and fifty million. And it made. Oof! And back then, that was like what? That was a bloated because that's like almost you could so, ratchet that up like twenty mil for inflation. The year before, Jurassic Park cost the uh, sixty three millions. So that just like how how do how do what ha what happens talents, I mean talents and locations. More so, how do they get this budget for this idea? Well, it, it, that's that's the thing, it, which is the thing that is more infuriating. You say, okay, we have Rob Reiner, we have uh, Elijah Wood, Dan Aykroyd, Reba McIntyre, John Lovitz, uh, John Ritter, uh, Abe Vigoda, uh, Richard Belzer, even for a cameo, Kathy Bates, uh, Grant Green. We have a sleuth of Bruce Willis. You say we gotta talk about Bruce. Yes, he was in this. Yes, and uh, and you say, my God, what could possibly go wrong is the um, uh, Father's Day paradigm. You just they have uh, this. Uh, Maybe they're overconfident. Yeah, is is the classic I, example of this can possibly cannot fail. I wish you whatsoever. could. I wish you could scientifically break it down in a way where you could see actually how it was created because like i said you can't we can speculate and we can talk about the aspects of the craft of movie making and what deviates but same thing with father's day i wish there was some scientific way we could see what was altered to make that product when people who have done 
And what is even worse uh, is that Father's Day was based uh, on a French movie. So they already had a term of comparison. And they say, oh, let's see what doesn't work over there. And let's do it again. Because that's apparently what happened. But it's like when you have people that have done movies, and, and Father's Day has like a, a roster of people that have made beloved stuff. So yeah. as a student, because you know? he talks about it all the time. Oh. As a student, I am wildly fascinated because you can't go, this is what I'm saying, you can't go to a movie set of uh, Mrs. Doubtfire and go to a movie set of Father's Day. And you you may notice like, oh, well, well, the, not anymore. the grip is doing something. But like, you wouldn't notice like, oh, I can visibly see the difference in what made the comedy not translate. Well, he was so, in a dress. <laughs> just. Hey, hey, hey. Shh. Oh my God, it's clotted. Oh God. This hollandaise smells like burnt rubber. God, it's hot in here. Reiner has a stellar track record. You've done movies well before. What changes? It's so fascinating as a student. What happened on this set to produce this odd result? What was different? What was the different mechanics? Was the director just overly cocky in the material? Was it a trend? Like on the set, like you talk about, we had such a blast on Silence of the Hams. We saw it. It wasn't the same as being there. Was it like you're making it and everyone's You weren't there, time? man. Don't speak for that. Like, you... What was that all about? We now return to Majama. It's humiliating, my friends. It's demeaning. Right on. Now is the time to say no. Now is the time to say just because you were born 25 or 30 years before me doesn't make you smart. It doesn't make you right. It just makes you old. There are several things. One, one thing that might have been, uh, I don't know. I, I, okay, first of all, I never read the novel. Yes, the, it is the, based on a novel. The, the Which is usually, it. most times, basis for a good story, because you've had it fleshed out in a different yeah. medium, which allows more yeah. breathing. Yes, obviously we have the cliche of the book was better, but I also do feel like basing it on a novel, it can be fertile ground. Yes. Uh, there, there might be several things, like for instance, one that comes to mind is uh, when you do a movie that, uh, especially the first part, uh, is a series of vignettes, because we have the Texas bit, the Hawaiian bit, the, the, the Alaskan bit. If they're not uh, sparkling, uh, they tend to drag the momentum down. Yes. Probably they were just like given way too much uh, power and liberty. There was no control. Uh. I think if they did the searching for the parents in a f more, f in a different way. A happy skit, but when you're happy to have those multiple skits, like. Um, yeah, because like you said, when you're kind of like, oh, wait, this is what I'm in store for. And the first one's kind of falling a little flat. You're like, oh, uh oh. Yeah. But like maybe even on like an audition process where they come to him or you do a, a series yeah. of events to, to, to get you to start visiting the parents' house. There's definitely the seeds of a great comedy. No, no, there. the, there's the, a, there's the, the idea, seeds of an I think even Ebert comedy. said like if you, anyone can do any material well, so I think he sees that this idea, as much as he seemed more disgusted by the overall idea of a kid trying to throw away his parents and get a new one. There is that one, um, and there is there are a lot of racial stereotypes. Uh, yeah. There isn't a gag that works. You couldn't write worse jokes if I told you to write worse jokes. And of course, you jokes. could always. The ethnic stereotyping is appalling. Yes. It's it's embarrassing. You feel unclean as you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. It's junk, first class junk. And then the idea that kids might be lured in by television ads to see this movie oh, about a little child who you know throws away his parents right. and goes shopping for a new set. It's really any subject could be done well. This is just trash, Roger. Okay. Well, he made a good comparison to Brooks. Kathy Bates. Oof. But I like the comparison to Brooks because it shows you that, granted, we are talking about a gap in years. Blazing Saddles was late 70s, correct? Um, so about almost about 20 years or so. So you got to factor that in. But I like that he said... I mean, racism is always funny, though. You're, <laughs> it's true. Sad but true. Uh, you're doing perhaps an outdated... I wouldn't even say outdated. It's not a wrong word to use. But if you're in the hands of the master, Mr. Brooks... Look at how painfully funny he does that stuff, whereas here... Tell us just... one of the jokes. Matt Brooks... Uh, Can't oh. you see that man is in need? Hey! 
The sheriff is a nick. What did he say? The sheriff is near. No, God damn it, James Lewis. The sheriff is a nick. Mel Brooks always said, uh, if you get uh, to the door, don't run away. Just say, ring the bell. Meaning... Uh, you cannot just like imply a joke and then being too chicken to actually go full force. He has always been incredibly reverent. But he made the important thing. I mean, it should be go without saying, but that he makes it work because people can and he be makes it work and try because things. Because he is he established from the get go, this is completely absurd. Even even Young Frankenstein, which uh, <laughs> which has here, an opening that could be worth of. Uh, a horror movie, you see the castle, you get close to the castle, you go, go close to the room, you have the clock uh, ringing 13 times for midnight, which is already funny. You mean you don't realize it, but yes, it's 13. But then you open the coffin and there is uh, the Baron Frankenstein. And so from that uh, little uh, touch, uh, you say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. Because, because it's done well. Uh, the, 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 the you best feel like you're in safe hands. Yes, and the best part of Young Frankenstein is that it looks like a horror movie from the 30s and the 40s. Right, aesthetically it commits And to all them. of a sudden there is this absurdity of already just like a corpse that doesn't want to relinquish his, his diary. And you say, wait a second, this doesn't happen in those movies. Although Bride of Frankenstein is also, uh, it has some intentionally comedic Someone moments. at work was telling me that, and I remember you telling me that. Now I'm intrigued that Bride of Frankenstein is actually comedic. <laughs> Yeah, here it just seems like quickly we kind of get that, I guess like you said, that the dinner table sets it and you're like, this is not, you're kind of thrown off. You're like, yeah. what? And that's why it's so weird is that if this worked properly, that's what I'm saying, the dinner table would seem like a magic trick where you have two obnoxious parents and a kid choking, but you'd be like, why am I cracking the hell up? Because the only, the only thing that you could have saved it, it was if the narrating voice of Bruce Willis had been funnier. North was positive he was having a coronary. I said, do you know who I am? Now, as a rule, 11-year-olds don't experience cardiac events. Well, in case you forgot, let me remind you who I am. But for North, this was a very stressful time. There is no uh, joyfulness. Uh... And it seems a little inconsistent throughout the entire yes. film, from yes. where we pick up well, his narration. Bruce is a great example of what could have been. That's bad. Because when Bruce sits down... Oh, wait, kid... wait. We have to say. So the kid, throughout the movie, Bruce Willis appears in different roles in every single uh, environment that North uh, winds up. And at first, uh, he is um, probably the only real character is an Easter bunny in uh, a mall. Yes. So North has a favorite chair he goes to in the store. The furniture store because he can easily blend in as just another kid waiting for his parents and again all of this that's a detail i'm very much like i feel like that's something we would come up with you know you're cozy when you're you're bored at sears on a saturday you sit down in the chair you can zone out no one thinks of it you're a kid shopping with your parents i think this is a wonderful touch this is something i think me and you would come up with some cozy type of oh the kid is a special spot in the store we can sit amongst the leave me out of this then the the furniture dioramas bruce willis comes up as a mall easter bunny in a pink suit looking like our famous scene in A Christmas Story, chopping on the carrot, breaking down life with the kid, just a guy on his break with 10 minutes to listen. And I'm like, you know what? I understand in this, the DNA of this scene could have been gold. I love the visual of Bruce in it. The one thing that we cannot control in this life is who our parents are. You dealt the hand, you're stuck with it. It's not like baseball, where if you don't like the deal you have with one team, you can become a free agent and try to get a better deal with another team. Another team? And even though I didn't really enjoy his character for some reason, I mean, because he's a likable guy, but this movie reminded me, every once in a while you stop with a movie star that's been established for 18,000 years, and you go, oh, 
Bruce Willis is a pleasant guy to watch on screen. I really like oh, him. Yeah. He's very likable. I like his character. And even though it doesn't work for me, this aw shucks golly gee kid helping you through life with the dollar store philosophy, I love it. I don't love the way it translates, but it made me see the, the watchability and the lovableness of Bruce. <laughs> Why doesn't he have his face covered? What kind of Easter bunny just has your entire human face oh. sticking out the front of your... Because you want him to take off a mask? Rabbit head. Because it's Bruce Willis. A, a mask or a nose or face paint or something. Like who... Probably what kind of Easter bunny does that? Probably a mask somewhere, but yes, it's, uh, it's weird. Now, I, I found it interesting that Mateo showed us both two different... Uh, Roger avert clips. Listen, none of this is interesting, okay? You can stop trying to fool us or yourself or... And it, one of them was their initial review and one of them was the year-end wrap-up yeah. when they were picking the word. Wrap-up. Both mentioned the barren line. North, Hawaii is a lush and fertile land. In fact, there's only one barren area on all of our islands. Unfortunately, it's Mrs. Hall. Well, simply also because... Probably those were one of the few scenes that they actually got from the distribution company. Women are always very oversensitive about not being able to bear children. I've noticed. Seems to be a big deal to them when you think it would be a blessing. Not going to be all of kids. Guess I'll just watch soap robbers and eat ice cream all day. Oh no, I can't experience the joy of mother. We now return to Majama. Welcome to Juneau, Alaska. Please remain seated until the plane comes to a complete stop in Anchorage, Alaska. To accompany our skid, we will be showing you another full-length feature film. Uh, what else can we break down about this horror we show? We haven't said right? anything. We haven't said anything. Okay, Matthew, what did you really not like? Nothing. Everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> what was most offensive to you? Um, I guess how much it's... Uh, especially with it being a dream, too. That you could go over so over the top with it being a farce, yeah, right. Or at least that you. Should, I mean, it is. It does. It is. Pretty yeah, but you should loony. put some elements uh, throughout the movie. The, on the only thing that it could have been a hint of a dream is the recurrence of Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. All the rest uh, is plausible to a degree, and and then there is this uh, bizarre side story or B story where the kid who runs the newspaper in we didn't the, even talk about that and the school Hold has it. has a plot to you haven't said anything of note for the past hour <laughs> please use your head he has a oh, he plot to but... take over the world it's interesting it's an interesting kids? Yeah. again Planet, that should but, be uh you it should be like... an awesome zany and all across the land the kids were continuing to hold their parents at emotional gunpoint Anything else, son? Yes. How's my room coming along? I'll have it spotless by dinner. Viva El Norte. Like, get rid of that maybe entirely and just double down on the comedy of him trying to find a new family and learning the lesson that... No, no, but that could be great. I think it's no, a, it's I, a it's, jumble. It's a very interesting of, and, again, and funny way to... And again, the kid plays him with much verve. Yeah. I see the vision. So basically the kid wants to use North's case as a way to take on the entire parental structure where all yeah. kids can be free, not under the tyrannical thumb of their parents. These are good ideas in theory. Yeah. The young, slick-talking lawyer character is a funny idea. 1793, the cotton gin was invented. North, could you please tell us the name of the inventor? E e Under strict advice from counsel, I must respectfully say no comment. Uh, Young. Talking about John Lovitz? <laughs> Lovitz is in this? Lovitz is always usually a welcome presence, uh, and he is given very little to do, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, surprisingly. But almost everybody is, is given very little to do. Would you think would make the... them their cameos that much more impactful? Yeah. Or you think, or you think that would... I wonder how the novel reads. Do you think the novel presents the story in its form it should be? Like, wow, well, what a whimsical probably. little nutty story. Because, I mean, you have, you have people like Alan Arkin, and you just say squander him. In it's the, me, uh, Alan Arkin. I'm playing a judge in this movie. The important thing is that North needs to find his parents. I speak in this way, and it's very potent and ripe for comedic undertones, yet usually I'm only in things that aren't overtly comedic. 
The good thing is that Alan Arkin was chased by Paul Smith uh, and the in-laws. <laughs> I'll stand still, all right? Happens all the time. Excuse me, Bert. Doc, uh, making a house call? Yes, one of those emergencies. That door never opens. Use this one. Wow. I want to be chased by Paul Smith. <laughs> Sadly, he passed away. Willard, won't you be going on to the next job soon? Willard, when do you expect your work will be finished here with us on the campus? I don't know. Maybe in a week or two. Maybe more. You don't have to worry. It won't cost you any more. I feel like there's an, a, there's the fledgling DNA of a comedic masterpiece hidden somewhere in this jumbled mess. Yes! Yes! But it is not without its irksome qualities that led me to uncharacteristically kind of hate it. Yep. I, underst I understand the ire, which is interesting because I guess I normally don't... This is, is a movie that it brings you to the... M. Night Shyamalan hatred. It's just that people were vehemently against it. I hated this movie. Hated, 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 hated this movie. I, I remember when I was here on, um, on the summer that it came out, and uh, I, I rushed to see it because, uh, once again, you see a trailer, you see all those names, you hear Rob Reiner, you say, oh my God. Hey, that's a great idea. The trailer was selling it as... Uh, light-hearted comedy plus uh, you see all this the, the names and i was there on opening night and yes the first thing that i saw i say maybe my understanding of english right now is not that good I can't give you that excuse mateo i mean i know and next to you a gunshot went off as the artist started to commit suicide <laughs> yes but then on that sa sunday i was cisco and ebert and i saw the review that we just watched and i was saying oh live yeah, and I say, oh, so then probably wasn't me. Maybe there is something. And so I started to chase the newspapers to read what they were talking about because back then, no interweb, the information superhighway. And, uh, and I say, oh, so it wasn't me. Good. I'm <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me then. Oh, good. Then it's not just me. <laughs> and that was it pretty much. It was just like uh, a very... Disappoint yeah, disappointment is probably the even more than hate. Has Rob Reiner spoken about it? Oh yeah. <laughs> North was the one movie. I mean I liked it. It was a cute little fable. Right. But the one with Bruce Willis in the rabbit suit or whatever. North, I mean, come on, I saw that one. I haven't had that much fun since the doctor chopped my nuts off. <laughs> well, I can't be blamed for everything I direct. Back to this meatball sub. But I, I think that, of course, nobody sets uh, to to make a, a bad movie per se. Sometimes they just take take a turn for the worse, uh, uh, unbeknownst to you. Maybe, maybe on set they were having a wonderful time. Maybe they were. It was uh, everything was. Uh, I mean, what's in it for you? Nothing. So this is it might have been. Uh, you, you genuinely are convinced that what you're doing is great and it works and is uh, lighthearted and is uh, inspired and whatever. And you end up hurting people. And, I'm sorry? You end up hurting people. It's interesting how you take risks. Stop. And, and when something wor works, you're a genius. And when something doesn't, you're a stooge. But you have to take those risks to get to that point. Like, if this had worked, it would have been, like I said, look at all the quirky choices that made this masterpiece. It don't know why, but everything works. It's a very, um... The thing that is... I don't like it. The thing that is uh, disappointing, on, especially with movies like this, but it should be with any movie. Uh, instead of giving the actors, uh, you know, oh, I give you $5 million, $10 million to be in this movie, as I'll give you a million dollar, which is already a lot, Plus, 3% of the gross. If it goes well, you earn a lot of money. If it goes bad, you made a wrong choice. That's fair. As it happens with everything uh, in life, in general. That bad, huh? And it should be like that, as a, as a system. Watermelon. Or watermelons. Or you pay them in watermelon. No, what? Oh, I mean, you buy a watermelon, you don't know what you're getting. Oh, yeah, exactly. I don't know because I'm allergic to watermelons, but...
It's all just water. And melons. And melons, yeah. <laughs> See? You gotta look for the yellow field spot. That's what I hear. The what? The, the where it lies on the field. It creates like a spot of yellow or very light green. Where the sun doesn't touch it. Yeah. So that's what you gotta look for in, to indicate a good ripe watermelon. Oh. In Italy, they just uh, were cutting a little square and give you a sample from the watermelon. It, where? Where? When you were going to buy it to the watermelon man. What if you don't want to buy it? Uh, you get another one. What, that's going to rot from the inside. Being uh, able, yeah, probably. But if you if you don't buy it, then probably nobody will. So they would have to dispose. It of makes it you anyways. think of some kind of cartoon where they put like a tube and like use a corkscrew and twist yeah. it out. <laughs> and then being able to round. identify the yellow spot is also how the janitor at the French's factory gets through his day. Let's express. <laughs> let's express. I feel like we got here quick, but that's what she said. Let's uh, let's express our feelings by throwing pieces of paper. We're gonna start with Matthew. Okay. Remember, one is very good. One is very good. Five is very bad. How's Tomas's head? Smooth and soft as hell. I guess we um, talked about Alex. I guess I'll go with four. Wow! Wow! Why? Oh, because you said it wasn't that bad in the end. I don't know. It's it's not a bad it's not a bad concept. Uh, it's serviceable. I don't think the boredom came from the movie itself. I think it just came from not wanting to be around. Um, <laughs> but I think overall. Sorry, you gave my movie a really bad review. Oh, it's not your movie, dude. I'm just suicidal. Oh, well, don't you think you should separate the two professionally? It's tough, dude. <laughs> but uh, even uh, this conversation right now, why? The idea in good hands can be very funny. Uh, and as much as I think the subplot of the, k the kid trying to take over the world with uh, using this as his platform of getting rid of your parents uh, could have been removed, I think it's a very interesting twist. Yeah. The garbage can is over there. That's a very great explanation <laughs> yes. of why. You just say. It's a very great explanation. Hopefully of the why wind you, will take uh, it in the right direction. Yes. Why you gave it four. Next up, we're going to do Mateo. Okay. Uh, Ow. Ow. Ow! You're like an SS officer just aiming the gun at different people. I go with four also. Wow! Because uh, it's disappointing, it's competently done, but it's very disappointing. And uh, it's unfortunately, which is the most painful thing, is filled with people I like in general. And uh, I hate that to see them suffer, but... Uh, but us? Yeah, well, yeah, you too, but we're not voting us. So, four. See? No. I got it into not the... I same. won't be so kind. Do one, two, three, four, and the full five. Because it's rare to activate this sort of... I don't think it deserves that. This sort of distaste. Uh, the battery have died. Battery died. What battery. does that mean? That's your fault. Yeah. Do we have to do it again? No. Never. God. Uh, and Rob Reiner probably has a lot of button-down shirts that have pasta sauce stains on them. We know it's true even if you laugh at it. He's probably eating one right now on the toilet. Is this a, is this a fat joke? Imagine Rob Reiner. Imagine, imagine a meatball oh, slips oh. out of the out of the sub and goes just right between your legs and just makes a plop. <laughs> Imagine Rob Reiner has his pants around his goddamn ankles on the toilet, and on either side of him there's just a literal pile of unwrapped meatball soaps. And as his face is sweating, as he's straining to push the fecal matter out, he just can't breathe because he's shoving them in. It's a vicious what cycle. Majama. like and subscribe <laughs> thighs are just covered in red splatters and then a meatball falls on his dick but he doesn't care so he just picks it off and leave a comment uh, in the session oh, oh guys this was another jam uh this is how we choose to spend our time 
If you've made it this far, please leave a comment. So many of you are not doing it, you know? You don't think I know there's other people watching besides the five people that leave comments? Why don't you do it, man? You know? Don't you want to help us get to the point where we don't have... <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Good night. Majama.